Topic number two comes from Clark Washington. Among the many achievements the Batman accomplished this past weekend was that it became only the second movie to make $100 million opening weekend since theaters reopened. Looking ahead to the remaining films in 2022, how many $100 million openings could we be looking at? Thanks for taking my question. All right, thanks for saying that in. And yes, so the Batman comes out, the, other than Spider-Man, the biggest opening weekend since 2019, and only the second film to open to over $100 million. Venom 2 got close, made 90, but the Batman, only the sec, only well, really the only film in 2022 to do it so far, and we're already in March. The question now becomes, with where things are at right now, what other films could possibly get to that achievement? What other films coming out for the rest of the year could There's hit that lot. mark? I don't know that there are. Come on. I think there are a couple. I don't think there are a lot. So what I thought we would do here is let's start going through a list of films. Let's go through a list of movies here and see what we think has a potential of being a $100 million opening weekend. Again, pre-pandemic, uh, it's it's not, I mean, still opening to $100 million even pre-pandemic was amazing, but not terribly uncommon. It's a little bit different right now. So let's go through some of these films here and see what we think has a chance. We'll start with the films opening in March. And obviously we've got the Batman, so that's already done it. All right, so let's go around here. Uh, obviously, the Adam Project won't, won't nor, nor will Turning Red because these are going to be digital displays. But we do have one movie coming out that I'm actually getting more and more excited for, and that's <laughs> The Lost City. Channing Tatum and Speed Girl. Sandra, Sandra Bullock. Bullock. Sandra, Speed and Girl. And Brad Pitt. And Brad Pitt with at least Daniel a cameo. Daniel Radcliffe. Of which which I, I think he looks great. All right. I'm going to say... 3% chance. Very very unlikely. I will say 3% chance this thing opens to 100. Rob? 0% chance. So zero. Ooh. I'm not going to say zero, but under three feels, right? This looks really cute, though. It, it oh, looks man. really good. I'm excited to I see it. I just don't want to be a dick. It looks really nice, though. It looks funny. <laughs> uh, look, that's a, look, you asked about $100 million. That's true. It ain't going to make yeah. that. I don't think that the movie doesn't look good. It actually, the trailer cracks me up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I'll, I will give it at least a glimmer of hope at 3%. But yeah, it's right, romancing you got, the stone you got, uh, 2022. What do you think about this one making $100 million? $100 million and the Opening only, weekend. And the only uh, movies that have done it is No Way Home and The Batman? Yeah. 0%. All right, so we're going to stick, stick for zero on that. All right, <laughs> let's get back over here. Uh, and then we got opening up Morbius. This is interesting. I think the trailers for Morbius have looked great. However, they have not followed up well with their marketing. They, I feel like they failed to... Now, I understand you don't want to get your marketing drowned out by the Batman. You don't want your marketing to get drowned out by the Doctor Strange 2. But, but you've got to put up a fight. And I have not felt like they have capitalized on the post-Spider-Man momentum that they could have had. I, so I'm still very much looking forward to this movie. I think it will do well, but I don't think it's going to hit $100 million opening weekend. So I will give it a 18% chance that Morbius hits $100 million. Rob? 10. 10 you're going to go as high as 10%? 10%. 5. You're going to go 5. Ray, what do you think? Morbius, $100 million. Uh, I'm with Chris, 5. Five percent. So it's it's a comic book film, whatever. It's got chance, but all I'm of us surprised that they haven't low. mentioned that Morbius can, is in the Marvel universe. Could interact with Spider Man. The general audience has no idea. They, well, you they, don't want to lie, but they, they do have Spider Man in the wall and one shot. Yeah. He says Venom, he but does... it, it, they're not doing a very good job of tying it all in. It just looks like a horror film. And for those general audience members who don't know, it's like, oh, that looks cool, but I mean, again, they just the the marketing disappeared. Mm -hmm. Like, they put out a couple of great trailers, a really good uh, clip. That clip was awesome. But they haven't followed up with it, and, and it's opening in just a couple of weeks There now, might be so. a reason for that. I don't know. Look, we've seen you can make a decent marketing company can make the worst movie in the world look awesome. So I don't buy that. Like, that marketing company can make any movie look incredible. Well, what I mean is the fact that they're no longer really, where are the TV spots? Where are all yeah, the... where are the TV spots? Where's uh, I, I, I just it, don't see it. That's what I mean. It's not that they're... Mar it's like there's no marketing. It's all of a sudden they're like, well, 
We did what we could. Let's not throw good money after bad. I hope that's not the case. They just can't keep polishing this turd. Yeah, See, I, I, and I've seen it be the other way. I've seen it be the other way. It's like, man, this movie isn't good, so we can't count on opening. We can't count on long term legs. So we got to make as much money as possible yeah. opening weekend. Throw everything we can. At I the hope market. it's great because it looks great. I, it looks great. I hope it's great too. We'll find out. But again, I, I'm 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 going to be at the highest here. But even my highest is eighteen percent. It has a chance at that. All right. Uh, next up, Sonic the Hedgehog two. Yeah. Five percent. I'm gonna say five percent. I surprisingly like the first one, um, but and I think there's gonna be some good follow up to it. I'm gonna go. You know, no, no. Let me change. It. I'm gonna go ten percent. Ten percent. Sonic can make a hundred million opening weekend. Rob, what about you? I'm with you. I mean, look, there's a lot of love for this franchise, so I could see maybe this surprising all of us. But on the other hand, with everything going on in the world, I can't see people rushing out the same way they rushed out to see Spider-Man, the Batman, to see Sonic. But you never know. So what percentage are you Kids, giving it? I'm giving it like you, 10. 10. You know what? I might have to adjust that up a little bit. I, I'm, I'm going to go highest, highest 15 because it made almost 60. The first one made almost 60. Mm -hmm. And then people kind of fell in love with it. You know, screw it. I'm going to go 20. I know 20, one out of five chance. One out of five chance. Right. Chris, what do you think? 20 was going to be my number. People love this. They were so surprised by it. Do not doubt how many parents are going to run to a theater that they can see something with their kid. That they played when they were kids. Exactly. You've got the nostalgia factor. You've got something that's appropriate for kids. You've got Ben Schwartz, Idris Elba. Come on. Oh. Ray, what do you think? Sonic making oh. 100 million opening weekend. Oh, hold on. I got to change my Morbius to 1% and Sonic is now 5%. I actually think Sonic is going to make more opening weekend than Morbius. Absolutely. It, it might. I think, so. I think you it might, more might be right about that. I mean, he's got the family. It's got the nostalgia. Mm -hmm. The first one is coming off of a very, uh, I'm not going to say really super good first one, but a, an enjoyable, entertaining first one. Mm -hmm. It's got and a lot going like for it. people like it. It's, it's like the Terminator 2 effect. People who watch Terminator on home video and cable forever, this movie has that love that's yeah, developed over time. Yeah, I think we're going to see some upward momentum. And it actually has an arch ri rival now, like right. Knuckles. Yeah. So it's one on, like, yeah. It's Everything we got looks pretty good. gems in there. It's mm -hmm. going to be so good. All right, let's keep going here. So after Sonic, we've got... Uh, ambulance with the LA in ambulance is a different color. Um, <laughs> so cool. I am the only person I know that does not think these trailers look very good. It looks like an SNL spoof. Yes. It when the trailer plays like, oh, this is a fake trailer. Mm -hmm. This is actually going to be a men's razor commercial or something like that. And there's, oh, no, wait, this is actually a real trailer. It does not work for me. Michael Bay. I like Michael Bay more than most people do. But not a lot of people love Michael Bay. I was really let down by his Six Underground, even though he had my favorite movie star in the world, Ryan Reynolds, in it. I was pretty let down by that movie. I, I don't, but but at the same time, I know a lot of people who think these trailers look great. Ten percent, ten percent makes a uh, makes a hundred million. What do you think? I gotta say, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see Ambulance. To be honest, I want a good. This I'm looking for this. This is something I need in my life. <laughs> I think it has 0% chance of making $100 million. Chris? Yeah, like a 2 to 3%. Two to three. I like explosions as much as the next person, and I love that Michael Bay sets are made of balsa wood and sprinkle, uh, sparklers. <laughs> but but this this just looks comically bad. Maybe it'll be fun, though. I mean, look, you got um, you got uh, Jonathan Majors in there. Is that No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Um, Black uh, Mantis. Abdul, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Manhattan. Um, so you got Black Mantis. You got... Uh, Mysterio, Jake Gyllenhaal. I mean, you got a good, you got a good the cast, cast. Is great, but the the <laughs> look, it just looks absurd. Like like these guys, they they commit a heist and they steal an ambulance to get away. Anyone who knows anything about driving in Los Angeles, there's, there's nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, like but if most you're, people if, don't. I know, but if you're downtown, I'm watching the even I'm watching the trailer. I'm like, it's like watching 24 again. Like there's no way in real time in 10 minutes you can get from downtown LA to someplace in the valley. Absolutely not. And everyone's so annoyed with ambulances here too. We're like, oh my god, an emergency. <laughs> You. I, mean, like, it's, you, you, I mean, I understand it's all around the L.A. River, too. Yeah. It's like, like, oh, yeah, that's all open space all the time. Absolutely. It's like, come on, man. All right. Let's look at the next one here. The Guys, we want to take a minute and thank a sponsor of today's video, Viore. Now, you know, Ann and I like to work out and train several days a week. But the thing is, I want to be comfortable and not look like a slob at the same time. And I often have a hard time finding something that does both. But Viore 
everything is designed to work out in, but it doesn't look or feel like it's made to be worked out in. It is so comfortable. You will want to wear this stuff all the time. Now you guys know I like some flexibility and versatility in the clothes that I wear, but that's where Viore comes in. See, it can be used for just about any activity like running, training, swimming, yoga, but it's also great just for lounging around or going out on the weekends in. For example, take the men's core shorts. These are the most comfortable and one of the best looking pairs of shorts that you can own and they're versatile. One pair of shorts for just about every sport that you can play. Or take the men's Sunday performance jogger. These pants are perfect for lounging around in or going out for a good run. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our viewers, they are offering 20% off your very first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash campia. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash campia not only will you receive 20 percent off your first purchase but enjoy free shipping on any u.s orders over 75 dollars and free returns go to viore.com slash campia and discover the versatility of viore clothing bad guys which i got my first look at at CinemaCon, as i did with uh ambulance as well uh, interesting looking little premise. I was not impressed by what I saw at CinemaCon. I finally got around to watching the trailer for it that they put out. You know, it's a cute trailer. I liked it. I don't think it has any chance of making $100 million over nope. the weekend, no. though. I, so I'm gonna, I, this is going to be my first one that I give a goose egg. What about you guys, Rob? I'll go with you zero. Yeah, zero chance, Ray? I'll go 1%. I'm not yeah. giving anything zero. Y you know, maybe we, shouldn't, exactly. maybe we shouldn't say what? zero because, you know, Never underestimate a family film, exactly. but I'm going to stick with the zero. What about you, Chris? I'll, I'll go with that 1%, right? That Hope doesn't mean we're saying the movie's yeah, zero, though. But, yeah, yeah, we're not saying the movie's bad. The movie's but I don't think it has any chance yeah. of making $100 million opening. It office. looks precious. Yeah. Like, I'm excited to see this. I'm but, certainly more, excited, more interested in it than I was before. Yeah. That's for sure. All right. Then we move on to what is now, now that the Batman is done, my most anticipated film of the year, The Northman. This looks bonkers coming from Eggers, who's like one of the most interesting filmmakers working in the business today. Like The Lighthouse, I still don't know what the fuck I watched. Didn't you and I see that together? Did I you? don't think so. You didn't sit together? I don't I, think so. Hmm. I still don't know what the hell I watched in that movie. But my God, it was fascinating. <laughs> I loved it. And yeah. then The the Witch yeah, was I I... so good. So good. And then again, at CinemaCon, they gave us... A really great preview of this movie like the show is about 10 minutes and like my jaw was on the floor and i got a thing for vikings so i mean the cast is absolutely fantastic so i am my after batman this is my most anticipated film of the year three percent that it makes it, it's it, this isn't going to have a huge this isn't going to have huge wide appeal so at most i'm going to give it a three percent chance rob i don't think i i'm i'm with you i don't think they even it's isn't it from like a24 or something i don't think they even have the firepower to open this movie on enough screens where it could even have a shot at making a hundred million dollars so i'd go even with you or less than you less than you said because i think again well, I, they are putting money into because listen to this cast alexander skarsgård who's super hot right now Anya Taylor Joy, who is super hot right now. Nicole Kidman, because even Heartbreak feels theaters. good in a place like this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ethan Hawke, Willem Dafoe. I mean, this is Bjork. <laughs> Bjork's, in? Bjork's in this movie. Oh, I mean, that's so actually really exciting to me. <laughs> I'd still make it three percent. I don't know. What do you think, Chris? I mean, yeah, probably around three percent. I'm gonna probably have to see this movie multiple times because Logan's also obsessed oh, with Vikings. Yeah, this is oh, not right, my no. kind of movie, but no, this is like two percent with movies like this. I usually don't go go back, even if it's a good movie. It's just I usually just don't go back to you watch know, it a second time. Only wait for it for release. But a home. second time doesn't matter. Will enough people see it a first time and get a hundred million true. on opening no. weekend? Well, That's I'm not... wondering too, though, because it seems like they're going to go for a prestige push with this. If yeah. we do get more butts in theaters, though, just because of that. Yeah, you, I, I, you I, could, I, could have be rated R and. Yeah. If you had a, a two hundred million dollar marketing budget, this movie would never make a hundred million dollars. Not right. that it's it doesn't deserve the to, poster but. is great. The poster, I really great. like it. It shows yep. the it shows the um, how, how do you the say environment? That? No, just so shows how big of scale of awards. Oh yeah, be. yeah. It looks it looks great. I I love it. Okay, next up, we've got Legally Blonde three. Yes, <laughs> I love this franchise. Even Blonder, Legally Blonde. Hey, listen, is awesome. I enjoyed the first Legally Blonde. 
It's so quotable. I it is. It's very quotable. It's it's got a uh, Mean Girls kind of <laughs> feel of uh, element to it. Mm -hmm. I was not a big fan of Legally Blonde two, to be honest. Oh uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, but she's back, back and blonder. No chance. I don't think this. I don't think this thing makes twenty million opening weekend. So I'm going to hand out my second goose egg on this, and I'm going to say zero, zero percent chance Legally Blonde three gets hundred million dollars. Chris, I'm going to go with ten percent, and this is mostly because. When they showed the first Legally Blonde at Synespia, everyone lost their friggin' minds, and it was packed in that cemetery. Like Mean Girls, it does have a very It has that cult kind following. of following. Yeah. We all still talk about how people with endorphins don't kill their husbands. They just don't. <laughs> but a very passionate following, but is it a big following? And, and I'm not sure about that. Rob? No, it's not big enough. It, I mean, it, it. look, this is not the kind of movie... And people love this franchise. I love the first Legally Blonde. I think it's a terrific comedy. Uh, I really enjoy the cast. And Jennifer Coolidge is in this one, right? Yes. So yeah. everyone's going to be doing their impressions again of her talking about hot dogs. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but it's never going to make $100 million opening weekend. Never. All right. Now we move on to what is probably going to be the first one that legitimately has a shot. We're talking about Doctor Strange 2 opening on May 6th. Benedict Cumberbatch, Elizabeth Olsen, Benedict Wong, Rachel McAdams, Chiwetel Ejiofor. Um, that last trailer came out and people lost their minds. Absolutely lost their minds. Building on the momentum of Spider-Man No Way Home and, and prior to that, WandaVision, which was a show that week after week after week, its audiences grew and grew and grew, became the number one show in the world, all that kind of stuff. Got a lot of momentum going behind it. Now, I'm still going to tell you, this is not 100%. This is not 100% that this thing makes $100 million. I'm going to give it, though, pretty damn high. Uh, I'm going to give it 85%. So 85% it makes $100 million. Just for context, the first Doctor Strange made 86 For for context. So you know what? I'll match that. I'll say 86%. <laughs> 86% that this thing makes $100 million. So I am anticipating this will clear the $100 million mark. I think it will probably, I think it actually has a pretty decent chance of exceeding what the Batman made opening weekend. It's not going to hit Spider-Man numbers, um, but I think it's it's going to go over that. So I'm going to set the bar conservatively at 86%. Rob, what about you? 100%. You're going to go 100. You, so this, there's this, zero chance that this does make 100%. 100% opening weekend. 100% that this is going to make $100 million opening weekend. 100%. What do you, what do you think, Chris? 99.99999999. So pretty case. high on that, yeah. Ray? Yeah. 101%. 101. 101. <laughs> There's no... There, come on. <laughs> come on. I mean, coming off of... I mean, this is essentially a sequel to Spider-Man No Way Home. I yeah, mean, in you're, a way. You're dealing yeah. with the ramifications, apparently, of what happened. And it's not like he cast another spell and yeah. changed reality. <laughs> and so many people, too, who aren't big MCU comic book people, who I know, too, were so invested in WandaVision because they thought that was such yeah. a great character study that they are just chomping at the bit to get more Wanda stories. So I think that's going to play out. All the people who love the other franchises from before, your X-Men fans, other people who are hoping to see other stuff get mixed in here too. It's a multiverse of madness. But here, here's why I'm not going to say, how, like, I, obviously at 86, I'm saying it's going to make 100 million. But the one thing I would caution is this. Whereas all the marketing for Spider-Man was, woo, ba 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 it's Spider-Man, he's swinging around, and there's some faces we recognize. This, the, the trailer for Doctor Strange and Madness, while for us in our bubble, uh, as you guys at home are in this bubble with us, like, it's like, whoa, 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 it's all the crazy stuff. Will that, that's not going to have the same appeal to the average movie going audience that say the Spider-Man trailers did. I think this, the, I think the Spider-Man trailers are far more appealing to the general movie going audience because seeing a giant tentacled one-eyed monster in the street, that that's not going to appeal to my mom. My mom loves the Spider-Man trailers, but seeing that and then just a lot of reality shattering, whatever, I don't think it's going to be as appealing to the general movie going audience as say Spider-Man is, but I'm still saying it's going to make a hundred million. Your mom's not into hentai? <laughs> I'm telling I'm telling you there's a lot of places around here that just uh, is not doing the mass thing anymore. It's going to be around the time maybe everyone who was scared of going to the theaters start going. Well, see, that's another yeah. thing, right? Like we just went for our Batman screening, 
that we just did with the fan screen, that was the first day in LA that they had lifted the mask requirements in theaters. So I don't know, for some people that might deter them from going, but yeah. for a lot of people, it's like, oh yeah, everything is feeling more open, so that might play into it too. So we're all saying this thing is probably gonna make a hundred million dollars. Well, it, the, it's only problem is if it's a bad movie. That's what I'm that, scared no, of. Not, even if it's a bad movie, people won't know that until after they see it, right? So this is opening weekend we're talking about. It's like long-term. But let me ask you this then. You guys, you guys are all saying 100. I'm saying 86. Chances it exceeds the 134 that the Batman had. I think it's got a decent... I I, I put it over 50% that it'll yeah. exceed what Batman made as well. I would too. How, how high? Like I'd say 70% chance it beats the Batman. I'd take that bet. I think you're right. 75. Yeah. You're going to go a little bit higher it. at 75. Yeah. I'm going to say 70, Ray. I'll, I'll I'll say what I just said for the Batman. It'll make 135. So you're going to go $1 million Ooh. over. You're yeah. playing yeah. this is right right now. All right. Let's keep going here. So after Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, we've got another comic book movie, the one everybody's talking about, Super Pets. Ugh. Super Pets. Hey, Ray. <laughs> Listen. I have very little interest in this movie. I'm not going to lie. And the trailers have not done anything to improve that. But family film, got The Rock, which is going to appeal to a lot of people. It is a comic book property. I think that's going to play into to parents as well. I'm going to say 55%. I, 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 so I'm going to lean towards maybe it does. Um, again, I'm not going to give it much more over 55%, but I'm telling you, you put all those things, family friendly, recognizable IP. You got Superman and Batman in there. Dwayne, the rock Johnson doing the voice. The parents again, want to bring their kids. I'm going to go 55%. Rob, what do you think? Zero. Zero. There is zero chance this movie is going to make hundred million. You're giving legally movie. blonde a better chance of getting hundred million yes. dollars than super pets. Yes, I am. Really? Yes, I okay. am. Okay. Zero percent, Ray. What do you think? One uh, percent. I think it's going to make fifty-four million. So It'll go over fifty for sure. If, that's, that's over fifty for sure, but only one percent that it can go. That it can go just, double that. It's just that's the number that I picked for okay. it not hitting a hundred. <laughs> it's not hitting a hundred. All right, not hitting hundred, Chris. Uh, I'd go around twenty percent, same as Sonic kind of thing. Could do well. Could do. And like, I, and I'm the one in this room who has the least interest it's in this very movie. True. But I'm, but I'm thinking it's going to be 55. percent All right, we'll see how that does. All right, next up. Um, also, don't forget they, they just add the Keanu Reeves part to that too. So everybody's talking about that. All right, here we go. This is the one Ray's waiting for. Bob's Burgers coming on May 27th. All right. I listen. I admit I'm not a Bob's Burgers guy. I am. <laughs> Love it. Ray is totally a Bob's Burgers guy. Okay, let me ask you that. Though. I have it recorded every week. All right. That trailer sucks. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought that trailer was terrible. I it's hate terrible. this trailer. It's it says nothing about the movie. Even as a Bob's Burger fan, I'm probably gonna watch it twice. I don't know. This trailer. That trailer sucks, and they keep showing it. They keep, uh, yeah. yeah. They don't change it. The only good part is the intro because it's that burger it looks so good. Yeah, yeah which, like which is live show. action. Is that the voice of Marshmallow too, doing the description? I'm being not like, sure. oh yeah, you want it. I'm not. That sure. trailer is unfunny the, and painful to watch. But the one watch. thing I like about the trailer, the only time I even grinned mm -hmm. was during that opening with the actual burger, and you hear one of the voices in the background, "What's happening?" <laughs> like, that was funny. Not first of all, as somebody who doesn't know Bob's Burgers, I'm watching that trailer. I'm like, I have no idea what's going on, and I have no idea what this movie's about. Not one thing other than that, what's happening? Other than that, <laughs> not once did I smile. Nothing made me laugh. And I'm like, this is brutal, Mark. And then they haven't improved it. They haven't corrected it. So I, I, I'm not, I don't want to underestimate the popularity of the show, but I'm going to go on a goose egg on this. I'm going to say zero, Rob. Me too. <laughs> zero chance, Ray. 1%. 1%, Chris? That sounds about right. Yeah. 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 Like I'm going to see it, but I'm with yeah. you. The trailer looks kind of crummy. That trailer is targeted towards fans of it already. It's not going to get yeah. anything outside of but it. But you're with a that fan trailer. of it already, and you said it was unfunny, and you hate the trailer. Yeah, I'm saying. But I, he's still going to go. I'm going to go see it. It oh. just really oh. looks like a long episode of Bob's Burgers, because everything that they do in the trailer is what you see in the episodes. Right. It's just on the big screen. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now we get up to the movie here that I think is the most interesting in this discussion as to what will make $100 million opening weekend. We are talking about 
getting into the danger zone. Woo! Do, na, 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 na. We're talking about Top Gun Maverick coming out, so they say, on May 27th. They bumped the release date like eight times already. But May 27th, again, you guys have heard me talk about this. I have seen um, 13 minutes of this movie. They showed us a CinemaCon. I was floored. Aaron and I were both completely floored. Like, it looks awesome. Whether the whole movie is awesome or not, I don't know. But this is a this is an interesting one because it is Top Gun. Everybody knows Top Gun. Tom Cruise is still a legitimate A-list movie star. But this is a movie that should have come out 15 years ago. I mean, I think that's how long ago Tony Scott was was trying to work on this thing and get this thing together, and they've been going on. And, I, I mean, I just don't know uh, anymore where things are at, but I do not under, want to underestimate Tom Cruise. So, uh, and it is Top Gun, and it does look great. And when they start dropping the trailers for this, I think it's going to be legit. I'm going to say 60%. 60% that Top Gun makes $100 million opening weekend. Rob, what do you think? I'm going to go all in on this. Oh. Now, now I, I, this is me gambling. This is the gambling side of me coming out. And and I, the, I'm i actually, all the ridiculous movie knowledge I've locked away in my head has left me completely conflicted. Right. I think this movie is either going to be a runaway success yeah. or a or middle, or middling disappointment. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I, it, it, this is... The, why Tom Cruise is still flying planes 35 years after he was fl flying planes in the first movie, I don't know. They kind of set it up. In, okay. in the footage I saw, they yeah, kind of okay, set it up. Set I think up, you're going to be sure, happy. I'm sure, but I look at this film, and it looks, uh, uh, it looks, it's got all the, it's got a volleyball scene in it. They're singing in the bar, you know, whatever. It's like, we've never grown up. The real question is, will younger audiences come to this movie? Will Gen Z and younger millennials even want to go see this movie? Does Top Gun... Even that, when I would say, oh, it's a favorite on cable and home video, it's been too long. I always say, John, that the pop culture has a half-life of 20 years. And once you get past 20 years, it drops off precipitously. This film is from the mid-80s. But the 80s are always popular. If this movie is as good as you say, and if this has... Well, I, I've seen 13 minutes, so I can't... <laughs> I mean, hey, there's an air war happening in another part of the world right yeah. now. Maybe uh, I'm going to go all in. I'm just going to say 100%, and if I'm wrong, I crash and burn, I lose my credibility, I turn in my geek card. Aww, but you wow. I'm, You'll I'm, be the goose of this situation. I, oh, yeah. no. Yes. oh, no. Oh, no, not goose. I'm going, oh, I will be, damn, I will be. Take me to I, bed or leave me forever. Or I will lose smash me forever. my head on that cockpit as I'm ejecting for the last time. <sighs> uh, I'm going to go all in on this. I'm going to say yes, 100%. 100%. All right, Chris, what about you? I'm a younger millennial and I have no interest in this film. <laughs> I wasn't alive when the first one came out. And when I saw it, I was like, hey, volleyball's fun. Val Kilmer's hot. Uh, this doesn't really do anything for me. That said, the same thing, though, the nostalgia factor for so many other people. Uh, I'd give us a 50% chance. You can go 50. Yeah. Right? You know, there's like a rumbling in, in myself that I feel we need a movie like this. I haven't seen a movie like this in a long time. It, it, yeah, like a, like right. a, 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 movie like this. a fighter jet in the sky, like in the skies. Like I have, I bought the Xbox flight stick and every fight or, or uh, F-15 game that comes on it for free, I'll download it and play it. So I'm into this. I just don't think it's going to hit a hundred. Uh, I'll give it 5%. Hey, it's been oh, like the fuck. most anticipated film for what? Like four years now five I years mean, now yeah, yeah. for everybody that's above 45 but imagine, yeah. the, imagine <laughs> the air stuff we're gonna get in I this gonna look awesome you know I, i'm so excited for that we'll, now we'll all see. we need is for them to announce that lewis gossett jr is coming back for another iron eagle movie then then mm. then we got something all right <laughs> let's keep going here next up on our thing we're getting into june and we're talking about jurassic world dominion uh look you don't have to be a rocket scientist on this. These <laughs> nope. movies make money hand over fist. <laughs> oh, it, it just it, it they it just does. I I have I have absolute zero. It doesn't matter what you think about the movies. These things always crush expectations, and it's always making a ton. If I go back, I'll look it up here in a second. But I'm going to go with zero doubt on this. This will be the first one that I actually like. 
proclaim it's not gonna be the best movie on this list but i think it's got the most guaranteed chance i am going to give this one my my certified probably my only 100 percent chance stamp on this there is no doubt this thing makes 100 million dollars opening weekend so in uh on june 10th the weekend of june 10th you're gonna see a far exceeded 100 million dollar opening for jurassic world rob what do you think dude it's got guys on horseback riding with dinosaurs across the plains of America <laughs> as the sun is setting. I, 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 you know what? This movie taps into what every four-year-old boy has wanted to see and girl. his entire life. And girl, too. I mean, you know. We go through like, our dinosaur phase. There, there you go. So there, there it is. Uh, I think that this movie... There's a hundred percent chance that this movie's going to make a hundred million dollars. Even even the last one, which was pretty underwhelming to a lot of people, I enjoy. I personally enjoyed Dominion. I, I did, or uh, Fallen Kingdom. I mean, I personally enjoyed it. But, but even it was pretty underwhelming. It still made a hundred and forty nine million dollars. Yeah opening weekend so i i have no doubt about this chris what do you think i'm gonna go with 98 and i'm only saying that because people are still kind of like but clone girl which get over it yeah <laughs> um that's where you draw the line in your science okay uh this looks fantastic to me and it's a trailer that made rob cry i know i have all the faith in this in the world that's how marketing is done this yeah. is 101 percent. this is the only dinosaur movies we get and this is going to wrap up this trilogy i think it's going to it's going to go past 100 million. yeah that's the other part about this we have the original cast mm -hmm. back with this you got a little bit of spider-man no way homeism in there Zaddy not, not to the same degree we got yeah you got the bloom in there you Dude, got this is the avengers endgame of dinosaur uh, movies yeah. It, it, yeah, it is that's what that's this is well put. think All about right. that you said yeah. it yourself right there you set yep. it up that's exactly what's happening yep okay so let's move on now to an this is another i'm very curious to see what everybody's gonna say about this one lightyear Ooh. Okay, so Ooh. we've obviously got the deep-rooted connections to this Toy Story franchise. Maybe the most celebrated animated series of all time. Uh, one of the only animated properties in history to be nominated for Best Picture of the Academy Awards. That's what Toy Story 3 did. Probably a top five greatest animated film ever. They've got a different kind of approach to this. So you've got a little bit of the Sonic phenomena here but i think on steroids absolutely that this is a property that the parents all watched and the parents all saw and that their kids have been watching as well and everybody loves it the trailer was wonderful the trailer was really good star man like everybody's singing the song now you got chris evans in there i look i am not going to give this the the 100 stamp because it is still not a big comic book movie or a star wars film or a jurassic park film but i think out of all the animated fair on here this is the one i would give the best chance i'm gonna go 65 percent I, I think there's a really solid decent chance this does it the trailer's great the parents want to see it the kids want to see it it's a family friendly thing i'm gonna go 65 percent on this rob what do you think i might go a little higher i'll go 75 I have a lot of faith in this movie. But again, if the movie isn't good, and if our boy Bob Chapek says, you know what? We're going to put this on Disney+. Plus." Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's a possibility. And you know what you know what will happen, Bob, if that happens? That means the movie will grow zero at the box office. I'll, I'll tell you what. I've said Bob Chapek will not put this, will not order this direct to Disney+. Plus. But if he does, I'm predicting right now, there's an emergency board meeting being called at Disney+. I'm selling that, but but anyway. So, but you're you're leaning 75. 75. I'm going 65. Chris, I'd probably sit around 75. You've got that nostalgia factor. The Toy Story franchise was really really great. Plus, you have the existing IP too of Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, which a lot of 90s kids really really loved. And so you've got that momentum as well to have that kind of more realistic take. If we get Princess Miranova in there, I'm gonna lose my freaking mind. Like I, I think this has a lot of potential. All right, Ray. Uh, what do you think? Two percent. I mean, I like that it has. Whoa! I like that it has space. You're making it a million. So you don't think people are interested in this? I, I'm just saying, I like that it has space and and You're and and your astronaut. <laughs> but it's just when you when you go back to like a a franchise over and over again, and it's a character from a franchise. I just I'd rather see the bad guys over Lightyear. But but you but again we're not predicting about what you want. You don't think people are going to be interested? Oh in this. no no no. Okay, for this movie, two percent. 
Oh, okay, well, he doubled it up. All right. It's not making 100. All right. Let's keep going here. Next up, uh, we've got Elvis. Now, look, uh, I don't think we have to spend a lot of time on this. We all think this looks wonderful. I, I have no doubt this is not making $100 million. So uh, because it does look good, I will not give it a goose egg. I'm, I'm, most I'll say is 5%. So th this isn't making $100 million. No. We can, no, Chris? Can't wait to see it, though. Ray? Uh, yeah, I'm super excited about it, but it ain't making $100 million. No. Elvis. Movie? Oh, Elvis, no. Yeah, no chance. It's going to be amazing. All right. Then we get into a movie that, would, that uh, I'm every time a trailer comes on, I'm like, didn't that come out three years ago? Minions, The Rise of Gru. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm a big fan of the 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 Despicable Me franchise. I think the the movies are fun. I, I wasn't so big on three, but the movies are fun and entertaining and they do well. But I just think I'll, this thing's going to come out. A lot of people are going to look at it and say, wait, that didn't come out three years ago? They're going to say to themselves, wait, I saw that already. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be one of those Mandela effect yeah. movies yeah. where yeah. people are like, I saw that movie already, yeah. even though they haven't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, I, well, under normal circumstances, I would say this is a 75 to 90 percenter. I'm going to say it's a coin toss and go 50. What do you think? If that. If that, Chris? I go with 50. I think that's a fair assessment. Ray, the rise of Gru. <laughs> oh, well. 1%. 1%. All right. Here we go. We keep going here. Next up, Thor, Love and Thunder, what coming July 8th. I... I can't not give this 100%. Like, at coming off of Thor Ragnarok, which was a huge crowd pleaser to both the, the hardcore bubble audience like us and the general movie-going audience adored it. Taika Waititi's on a roll. This thing looks fantastic. I, I, I'm, I'm going to go 100% on it. Yeah. Rob? 100%. Chris? 100%. My mom quotes that movie. <laughs> Ray? Uh... Or what? <laughs> Thor, Love, and Thunder. Sorry. Ray is doing his job. He's trying to interact with the live chat. Thor, Love, and Thunder. 100%. You're going to go 100%. Yeah. Okay. Let me. I just want to double check this, though, because Thor Ragnarok was not. It didn't have the biggest opening in the world. It made $122 million, But I, I think the momentum of this is just going to go sky high. So, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to stick with 100% here. Okay. Next up, we got Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. Woo! Mm, that's a tough one. There's so much going on. Like, mm -hmm. hold a second. Fantastic uh, beast. Let me just see what did Grindelwald do? Because I didn't think Grindelwald did great. Now, Grindelwald opened to 62 million, which is on the right side, getting closer to 100. I think this one will do better. I think this one will open higher than, um, than the Crimes of Grindelwald did. I think the the trailer has been fantastic, building on the momentum of the whole Harry Potter 20th anniversary stuff. I will go as I'm going to make this one a coin toss. I'm going to make this one a 50 percent. Rob. Yeah, I think I'd go with that, too, although the movie does look fantastic. It does look really uh, it good. It really yeah. depends, you know, what people's appetites for Harry Potter is. But I, I could see it. I'll go a little higher. 60 percent. Chris. 45 maybe a lot of harry potter fans i've talked to are really really split on going to see this because it is so connected to jk whereas the 20th anniversary really separated itself um and there's a lot of you know do i see this do i support this i don't know how i feel about it um which to all those people i always say support your fandom support the people in them remove politics from it when you can and support um charities and things that make you feel good about doing that so you can go see the movies you want but most of the people i've talked to are really really split about whether or not they're going to see it even if they even are diehard harry potter fans ray what do you think five percent wow Whoa. I'm very skeptical five percent well, all right I mean, you know i'm judging these things either below five percent or hundred <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's not no a lot of gray there yeah. not a lot of gray there all right we keep going here we've got the new one nope from Jordan Peele coming out, the trailer looks really good. Um, 3%. I mean, I th I've, I've got a feeling this is going to be good. And I think it's definitely going to have an audience. Uh, yeah, I can't wait I, to see I it. Can't see it. I can't see it doing super well, but I'm going to give it 3%. What do you think, Rob? Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm going to give it a zero. There's no chance that this movie's going to make $100 million opening weekend. However, that said, I can't wait to see this movie. I, it was right up my alley. Please be more like you said, John. Get out than us, though. Now, yeah, please. But but even us, which was not very good, us opened to seventy-one million dollars. 
Right. I mean, so so like it, it's there. It's in that, but I just don't but, think this is going to appeal to a general audience. Do you so. know what's really interesting for me about this movie? Like, I love the trailer. I love the feeling of it. My only problem with this is that the trailer and the title of the movie tell me two different things. Like, nope, I smile and laugh at. The trailer did not make me laugh. The trailer was very intriguing. It was very atmospheric. See, the trailer it makes was, me think nope is the perfect name for it. I, I, thing. It could go either way. That's right. the thing. And I'm like, it's either going to work really, really well, or it's going to be like us where I got to the end of the movie. And I'm like, wow, I love the first half of this. What? And then it went where? Say that again. How much did us make opening? 71. 71. Oh, I might go on the uh, on a limb here just because it's fun. And let's be wrong. 100%. Hundred percent. This makes, makes at least hundred million. Uh, you know, I would love to see that. I, I just hope this movie delivers. Well, I mean, yeah, but that's that's a separate question altogether. I know, Chris. What do you think? Think there's enough interest there from people to want to see Nope to a hundred million dollars? I mean, I definitely want to see it, but I'd give it a ten percent. All right, so we're all, we're at a hundred. We're at uh, <laughs> three. <laughs> we're at I'm all right. On Let's keep going here. Uh, next up, this is interesting. Coming to us on July 29th. Dwayne The Rock Johnson bringing us Black Adam. Uh, there's a little bit of a Top Gun element here. That this was something and a little bit of a rise of Gru. It's like, oh, this movie didn't come out? Yeah. They've been talking, they've literally been talking about this film for seven years. I mean, it, it uh, and so this is a brand new character in the DC space. Um, it is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I will say 75%. I'm going to give it... So I'm leaning towards that it'll it'll crack 100, but I'm not like at 100% like Thor Ragnarok. I'm going to go 75%. Rob, what about you? I think I'm going to do that too. I mean, the, the general audience doesn't know how long this movie's been in production, but the general audience also doesn't know who Black Adam is. And the general audience, they might like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, but even his movies, the good ones, are sort of middling. We both like Central Intelligence, Skyscraper, Jungle Cruise. Rampage. Rampage, you know, whatever. He's not that 100 million guarantee opening weekend guy yet. I'm I'm iffy. I can't wait to see this movie. Justice Society's in it. Hawkman, Dr. Fate, bring it on. But I don't think it's going to do 100 million. So what, what number are you coming in at? I'll go 75% like you. Oh, so you do think it's going to make 100 million? Well, <laughs> I don't want to. You're I, over I, I, 50. I, I, that means you're leaving. To be honest, well. you know what? To be okay, I'm going to go 50. Nah, I'm going to go 40. I don't think, it, I just don't think this is going to make it. It, get, it might get close, depending on how good the movie is. If it gets great reviews and if early audience uh, reactions are, are, are really enthusiastic. You can push that over the edge for you? Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm going to stick at 75. What do you think, Chris? 75 sound good, sounds good to me. I think this will kind of ride some of that Batman momentum. That trailer we see setting up the DC. Yeah, that, too, that's going to be, that's, that's going to have a big impact as I well, I think. that's going to kind of push this over. And man, Rampage had no business being as good as it was. Gosh, that was a fun movie. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, I don't think it was one of his better ones, but, no, but it was fun. way more fun than had any hey, dude, I like San Andreas, man. So I like San Andreas too. I did too. Ray, what do you think? Black Black Adam's shit. Well, I'm, I'm reading here. Shazam made 53 million opening yep. weekend. I gotta yeah, go. Shazam fly. didn't have Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I know. That's why I'm gonna double that. Mm, it'll just barely make 100 million. Okay, so you say yeah. it will. All right, let's keep going here. Next up. We got one of my most anticipated films of the year, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1, coming in October. Um, I Here's the thing. I know um, that I love this movie more than the vast majority of people do. I mean, I, I know not everybody loves this film. The, the, I mean, I literally thought Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was the third best film of the year that it came out. Which is 2018. I only thought A Quiet Place and um, Black Klansman were better. And this is the year that Infinity War and Black Panther came out. And I thought this was the best comic book movie that year. But it only made $35 million opening weekend. And now granted, I think its audience has grown since then. I think appreciation for this movie has grown since then. But... As much as it's probably like number three or four on my most anticipated of the year, what's remaining, 
I would only give it a 35% chance of cracking $100 million opening weekend. Even though I, I'm dying to see this, but I'm going to give it a 35% chance. Rob? I think it's going to be huge. I hope you're right. I'm, I'm going to go 90 90 percent that this is going to make 100 million dollars oh i weekend. hope you're right ray what do you think i'm hoping everyone caught it on tv the ones who refused to see it because i know people who didn't want to see it just because it was an animation and they liked it but i i don't see it hitting 100 million i right. don't give me a number uh i'll go two percent two percent okay More milk 75 percent. i think that a lot of people found this once it started playing on tv once it went to dvd all that good stuff um i'm hoping i'm hoping i'm hoping it does this this i think is one of the best spider-man films period like this the game for the ps4 and amazing spider-man yeah, I, I think this is the best spider-man yeah. movie ever it's so yeah, good yeah. it's so good all right next up halloween ends Woo! i did not like the last halloween movie i love the the first one of this series i loved the first one of this series I was not big on the second one. I think there's a lot of people that felt a little disappointment in it. I'm going to go as high as 20% that Halloween ends gets 100 million. Rob? 5%. I think this this is a franchise that has run its course. People will go see it. But, yeah, no. Okay, what do you think, Chris? 1%? Is it written by that Danny McBride? Eastbound and down yep. Danny McBride? Yeah, he did the first yep. one, too. Really? Yeah. Oh, hey, good job, Danny. Uh, yeah, 1%. I don't think this is... Something that's going to hit that. Okay. Now we get into another really interesting one. Flash, November 4th. I I think there's a lot of potential here. With they're, they're already leaning into the Michael Keatonisms of it. I don't even think they've started to really... They haven't even begun their marketing no. on this yet. And it's already got a couple of steps up. Um, I think with the success of Spider-Man No Way Home, and there's obviously going to make this, in their marketing, they're going to make this look similar to Spider-Man No Way Home. And that's smart. That's mm -hmm. a totally smart thing to do. I'm going to give this thing an 80% chance. 80% chance The Flash makes a $100 million opening weekend. Rob, what do you think? I'm going all the way. 100%. 100%. Chris? 90. I'm a little skeptical, but I, I do think it's going to make it. Chris? All Chris, right. Ray? Yeah. I confuse us, too. We'll go 100. We're going to go 100. Okay, so 80 100. 100, 90, 100. There we go for Flash. All right, this one's going to be really interesting too. Black Panther Wakanda Forever. First Black Panther, massive smash hit. But two strikes. It doesn't have... Chadwick which Boseman. one should I say first? We'll go with the actor. It does not have Chadwick. And then proceeding from that, They've refused to recast the role, so they've also gotten rid of the main character. They've gotten rid of T'Challa. So it does not have Chadwick Boseman, number one, and it doesn't have T'Challa, who is your main character in the first one. I still think it's going to have a $100 million opening, but I am not giving this thing 100 because of that. I, I think people are underestimating how big of a hurdle those two things are. So I'm going to go 75%. I mean, still, obviously, I'm thinking it does, but I'm not going to go 100. I'm going to say 75% on this. Rob, what about you? I'm going all in 100% on this. Really? Even the fact that it's lost yeah. its star and it's lost its main character? That doesn't mean it isn't going to be great. No. I'm not saying it isn't going to be great, no. but I think that's going to be a hindrance I just to some think, people. Again, again, I think people are waiting for this. I think it's a movie that's part of the zeitgeist. I think that it's called Wakanda Forever, which has become a battle cry in the world. Mm -hmm. It's going to make $100 million. What do you think? 90% on this one as well. I do think people are going to see it just because it's part of the Wakanda story. Um, and the, pro the public audience, too, also doesn't know about how much of a production nightmare this has been. I think they're going to just go see it because of the IP. Ray? 100. 100%. 100. Okay. Next one up. Now we're getting into December. Uh, a film I had a lot of fun with. The first DCEU film to hit, to hit a billion dollars at the box office. Aquaman. With my man, Jason Momoa. My oh, man. He's recently reunited with his wife. Made everybody in the world feel feel good about that. Aww, yeah. But uh, All your girlfriends are safe. <laughs> <laughs> I, man, but here's one thing to keep in mind. Aquaman did not make $100 million on its opening weekend. Aquaman made $67, 68000000 million on its opening weekend. It was a movie that had legs, like obviously great legs, uh, making it to a billion legs. dollars. <laughs> it had Momoa's legs. I So 
considering the first one started a little slow and built momentum and got big and took advantage of the Christmas season, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say it's 100%, but I will say 90. I will say 90. Like, the first one is so much fun. It's got a lot of positive emotion behind it. Uh, I think it's going to be coming off of The Flash, which I think is, again, I think it's going to be successful. So, yeah, I'm going to go 90%. Rob, what do you think? 100%. 100%. People love Momoa. They love Aquaman. They love this. It, this movie grossed, the first one grossed over a billion dollars. 100%. All right. Ray? 5%. 5%. That's the highest I give when I don't think it's going to make 100 million. All right. It could make 99. I'm saying it might make 99, but it won't pass 100 million on opening weekend. All right, Chris. 90% again. All these DCEU films, I think, have the potential, but just not 100% sure. All right. Going all in. Then we've got, uh, is that one coming out in 2022? Well, there's two left, and that's these. Avatar 2. <laughs> Assuming it doesn't get delayed for the 49th time. Yeah. Avatar 2 opening the same. By the way, we got to take this in consideration. It's technically opening the same day as Aquaman. Oh. Oh, she, she. Mm. Opening the same day as Aquaman. That's tough. That's tricky. You know what? The little bubble fanboys again that we live in. Nobody cares about Avatar 2, blah, blah. Yes, they, yes, they fucking do. do. Yeah. <laughs> and all these people who are, ah, no, it's not even going to make 20 million. I've had people seriously look me in the face and say they don't believe Avatar 2 is going to make 20 million opening weekend. There is going to be a very big slap of reality across the face when this thing opens. I will tell you what, Avatar 2 100% makes it now. The first one also, like the first Aquaman, started slow out of the gate. But then it became the worldwide cultural phenomenon and is, by the way, the number one biggest box office movie of all time until Endgame gets a re-release. Then it'll hopscotch over it. But for now, it is the number one box office film of all time. It is a 100% that Avatar, even opening against Aquaman, 100% Avatar 2 makes $100 million opening. I'm not saying it's going to be a two billion dollar movie like the last one was. I'm, I'm not saying that. I don't even know what kind of legs it's going to have, but it will open to 100 million dollars. 100 percent it will. Rob, what do you think? Look, there there is a fanboy blind spot for certain things that have certain kind of emotional resonance. Uh, the fact that Robert Pattinson, people still called him Twilight Boy. That's that's a symptom of the same thing. A the dislike, the healthy dislike of avatars. It comes from the same well. And in fan circles, I've found myself defending Avatar since it came out, which I thought is absurd because it's James Cameron. When will people learn? Never, ever, ever bet against James Cameron. Yep. Ever. This movie, like you said, John, it's $100 million. I understand Avatar is, oh, it's like Fern Gully. It's like Dances with Wolves. What you really mean is it's an emotional journey that has romance in it and that has wonder and awe. It's not as cool as maybe your favorite movie, but there's a reason it's one of the highest grossing films of all time. And this one, look, if it's not a $100 million opener, that means that James Cameron has failed for the first time in his life, like utterly failed. The man has delivered since 1984. I will not take that bet. He's one of the goats, John. So give us your number. 100%. Now, by the way, I want to remind everybody, like, like Aquaman, it did open slower. Aquaman opened at 60-something. The first Avatar opened to 77. But again, that's because it wasn't the worldwide global phenomenon. So what number did you give it again? 100%. You're going to go 100%, Chris? I'd give this one 100%. Yeah, I I, I have no doubt about it. Even opening against Aquaman, yeah. I have no doubt. Ray? You know, the delays actually, I think, help this movie. You think because, so? Because of the time gap between the two, the, the technology in the first one, like the visual effects, this is going to be a, a spectacle, I think, oh, in yeah, water. No doubt. 100%. Okay, we got, I think this is the first one that we're 100%, oh, no, were we all 100% on Jurassic? I can't remember. Yeah, I think we were. Okay, Pretty I think much. we were, yeah, Pretty so much. there you go. And then the last one, which I don't even know if it's going to come out this year or not, but the animated untitled Mario movie with Chris <laughs> Pratt, Anya Taylor-Joy, Jack Black, Seth Rogen, Fred Armiston, Keegan-Michael Key, um, 5%. Yeah, I'd... 
I, I'm not even look. I'd give it only a forty percent chance it actually opens this year. But yeah. I'm, for now, I'm going to say five percent. You guys, if that, Ray, I'll go with you. Five. This okay. is my goose egg. Oh, you this got is your goose nostalgia egg. Nostalgia is playing against this movie. Everyone's so mad. Everyone's so mad about every choice with this movie. I'm yeah. wearing a Mario dress right now, and I'm one of those people too. Who's like, I don't care about this at all. All right. So there you go, guys. That was a long segment. But that's all the films that we talked about that we think have the chances of making 100 million. Remember, we're not talking about the quality of the movies. We're talking about do we think there is interest in the fan base to get out there and see those films opening weekend? Everyone's playing at home right now. They were playing. They're, they're yeah. judging us. Yeah, everybody's judging judged. us. We'll see. We'll see. But anyway, <laughs> that's our thoughts on this, guys. What do you think? Do you, do you generally like our picks? Do you think we got it way wrong or one or two of them? Whatever you guys are thinking, jump on down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.